Another iteration of EA Sports' beloved and most popular sports game franchise dropped for the 2021-2022 season. NHL 22 is out now, and to clarify, by most popular, I mean it's only beaten UFC. FIFA, Madden, NBA, MLB, even WWE are beating it. Which is a shame because I love me some hockey. The question is, does this being so far down in the sports top sellers mean hockey isn't as popular as all the other sports? Or this game just isn't as good? Let's walk through this year's iteration to find out. To start off, I will say there's only two sports I care about, F1 and hockey. I grew up watching the St. Louis Blues games with my dad, going to games with him, my buddy Shane and Ryan, and playing some form of NHL on a console since the early 90s. I remember in the early 90s playing against my dad and he loved the Chicago Blackhawks. Even though we were both hometown Blues fans, I couldn't best the Hawks with them, so I ended up gravitating towards the Maple Leafs. It was strong enough impression that I have a couple Maple Leafs jerseys, hoodies, t-shirts, and memorabilia within reach of me right now. The NHL game franchise definitely had a part to play in that because it let me experience hockey all year round and really got you into the game. I mean, EA Sports. It's in the game. That being said, NHL 22 has to live up to my smooth brain memory of a franchise I hold on a pedestal that is responsible for core memories with my dad. So good luck to them on this review. First up, let's talk about graphics. This is the big update for this year, and when I say big update, I'm doing it with air quotes you can't see. NHL has moved to the Frostbite engine that Battlefield is famous for after using the Ignite engine for the previous seven years. It's also the first game in the series to hit the next-gen consoles, and my review is based on this PS5 version. The new engine definitely does have an improvement in lighting, and you can tell it's better over last year. The updated graphics interface with the on-ice presentation has been improved a lot as well. It gives it more of a TV watch kind of vibe. The most noticeable thing for me, though, is lighting. Seeing the ice under the arena lights and watching it get scraped up over a period, only for it to be shining and clean after a Zamboni run is a great visual touch that does absolutely nothing for the gameplay. But it is nice to see. The character models are all okay and serviceable. If you're an NHL fan, you can pick out most of the players by their character models, for the most part. Some are done a lot better than others, though. Seeing the jerseys up close, they have a great cloth texture to them, and the game overall looks very good. Is it a massive generational leap over last year? Not at all, but it is fair to say it has been improved. Sound-wise, there is a neat little feature I've noticed on the PS5 with the DualSense. The audio is actually split between the speaker on the controller and the sound system that you have. So for me, it gives the low end of the audio a very reverby type bass heavy sound through the sound system, and the voice and on-ice audio is piped through the controller. It gives that on-ice feel and makes it sound a lot more immersive. It's like being in an arena where the bass is reverbing off the super high ceilings and the rest of the sound is just being piped at you through a speaker. It was immediately noticeable and unnecessary, but a cool feature they added in. With previous years, sound still solid on hits. Shots hitting the bar make a very upsetting ting, unless you're a goalie. And there are arena-specific sounds for fans of the real sport. Like at the Enterprise Center in St. Louis, you'll hear the blues announcer, the organ, the towel guys count, and familiar Let's Go Blues chant, which is one of my favorite things they've added that really helps get into it. The soundtrack is the largest to date. Good variety of songs with the likes of Machine Gun Kelly, Imagine Dragons, Dropkick Murphys, 21 Pilots, and a bunch of other artists lending their talent to the great soundtrack. Commentary is nothing new. Um, exact same from last year, except there's now a new female reporter that talks about the new X Factor for players, and we'll get into that right now with our gameplay. The big addition to gameplay is X Factor. I say big addition. It's a feature borrowed from Madden that was introduced a couple years ago that effectively gives star players unique abilities like skating, eliminating penalties on speed or agility or acceleration when you have the puck, or being able to switch to back skating without a penalty to that speed. There's like 25 I've seen in total affecting skating and shooting and passing, defending, goaltending, and hockey IQ. They give already high stat players a seeming boost but for gameplay, really it just marks the player you need to lay out with an open ice hit right away. Bearing in mind, since they are usually star players, this is going to lead to a fight, but hey, that's the game. Don't try to show off your figure skating butterfly jumps when my six foot three enforcer has a coach's assignment to murder you and your family. Outside of the engine, given some new shooting, passing, skating, and hitting animations, a bit of a different feel, other gameplay hasn't changed much. The Be a Pro story mode is literally the same as last year, with you starting in your choice of league for a draft, playing a few games, only this time, instead of going in between the Kings and the Rangers for the 1-2 pick, it's between the Sabres and the Seattle Kraken. 
the conversations, the perks you buy, the locker room animations, the coach chats, the agent chats, the areas that you're playing in, they're all carried over from last year. So don't expect anything new or groundbreaking. Chell is exactly the same and they added the expansion draft. So you can redo the Kraken expansion draft or just add a 33rd team. Overall, it's a good game. If you didn't grab NHL 21 and experience be a pro, go ahead and pick this one up. It's a great hockey game and it's enjoyable to play through the seasons. If you had NHL 21 or you want to play online only, there's no need to jump on this version. The engine is new and it does look a little bit better. The rosters are updated and they added the Kraken, but it's not enough to say grab it at full price. Wait for it to go on sale and then pick it up. Enjoy the hell out of it and let's see what they have in store for next year. Thanks for watching another Low Poly Panda review. Be sure to like and subscribe for more videos. Leave a comment and let us know what you want to see next, and we'll see you in the next one.